lady in the back right there. Yes, you. Uh, I was just wondering that scene with Van. You just reminded me. Did yeah. all of those officials from Van lose their jobs for not having a response? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, the, all those people from Van are still there. I guarantee you, if you ask that question today, they'd have an answer like that. <laughs> um, but uh, but it, you know, it was amazing. All those people are still there. When the film premiered at Sundance, Beth Jones, the uh, superior technology girl, was there. And people went up to her afterwards and were like, oh my god, you're so great in the movie. It was so wonderful that you know that you, that you did this. You guys look, come off so great. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> I promise the Q&A will get more interesting after you leave. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Right, right. um, what's the best piece of advice you can give to a filmmaker or a writer when it comes to maintaining their artistic integrity if they're dealing with product placement? Oof. Sorry. Wow. Um, yeah, don't wear this jacket. That's exactly right. Um, <laughs> that was his answer. I'm giving him full credit for that. Um, what's the best advice I could give to somebody who's dealing with product placement? I mean, the biggest thing is you should try to push back and maintain as much control as you can. Uh, you know, the thing that we were really, you know, persistent about was maintaining creative control of the project, making sure that it was our vision, it was our direction, you know, what, what I wanted this film to be was what was continuing to drive our story. Um, what I love in the film is you do see things start to be corrupted along the way, which I think is great. You see, you know, we have to do interviews here, we have to, I can only eat this, we can only drink that, I can only drive this, you know, so you start to see how that influences even the film we made, which so works for this movie. You know, maybe you know, other when you start watching TV shows and suddenly you see somebody who only drives like Cadillacs, and you're like, that guy's too poor to drive a Cadillac. Why is that? Or something. You know, it's, you'll start to question things. Um, but for this film, it worked fantastic. You know, I think it, it plays on every every possible level. But uh, but and I especially love the scene where I'm going in to pitch Palm the commercials, and you literally see them say, oh yeah, those all commercials. No, what if you did something like this? And so you see them literally tell me what they want the commercial to be, and so you see the commercial, you know get kind of produced and played out. And, uh, and the way that we the, this film was structured, um, you know, where it plays into the whole truth and advertising section where, you know, it kind of makes you question, can you really believe what you see in commercial? I mean, I love that, with the way that whole thing works. So, um, I mean, the, the greatest advice is, you know, fight for as much as you can. You know, fight for as much control, fight for as much influence, and, uh, and don't give up, you know, until ultimately you feel like you can't get another inch. Because here's the thing, once you start dealing with a company that comes on board, if you give a company an inch, then they're going to keep coming back and wanting more, and wanting two inches, and three inches, and, you know, and a foot. And so you have to start, you know, feeling real. You have to understand where, and know, as you start negotiating, where your end point is. You can't not know from the beginning. You already have to know when you start negotiating with someone where you will stop. You know, that way you, you know that that's where I'm ultimately going to end up. And that gives you strength in a negotiation, knowing where your end point is. Yes, sir, right there. In the pink shirt, or orange shirt. Pink. Okay. Yeah. In the process of making the movie, up till now, what shocked you the most? Like, what was that moment where you were like, oh my gosh. What, what was it? So the point of making the movie, what shocked me the most? Uh, well, the fact that anybody gave us money to make this movie is remarkable. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm dumbfounded every time I watch it. I'm like, I can't believe they gave us money to make this. Um, yeah, I mean, I... Uh, I mean, I think that was good. I mean, I, I, was, I was kind of blown away when we started getting into the whole school section, the thing with Broward County, that now there are schools all across. What's happening in Broward County is happening not just in Florida. You know, it's happening in Texas, in California, in Arizona, in Pennsylvania, in Colorado, in school districts all across the country. You know, these people are, they're all, the same thing is happening everywhere. You know, you can buy naming rights to classrooms. You can buy, you know, naming rights to gymnasiums, to stadiums. Um, you know, it's, they're literally selling off the education system, you know, to corporate interests, yeah. to advertisers, to marketers. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think there's a real conversation to have right there, kind of where do you draw the line? Like, where does it stop? You know, when my kid, you know, is 16, is he going to go to, where the, you know, is he going to go to Red Bull High, like the girl says? You know, it's it's going there. In New York City, they just, they just floated a referendum in the city council where they're going to start selling off the naming rights to parks and playgrounds. Yeah. You know, that's where we're going. You know, pretty soon I'll be able to take my kid to the Pepsi Playground in Bank of America Park, where we can go on the Cheeto slide on the Hostess Twinkie Mary around. Um, it's crazy, but it's that's literally where we are. We're literally, we're literally getting into a world where everything's going to be brought to us by a sponsor. Yes, sir.
Yeah. At the end of the film, it says, Mark, you say Mark and your work. <laughs> I kind of would like to understand a little bit what you learned along the process. What are they expecting about the premiere? What, what the brands were expecting about the premiere? I mean, I can't, I can't really answer that. I mean, was, you know, I didn't really go in asking them, so what do you want to get out of this movie? Because, it, you know, it's like we didn't try to go in and fulfill all of their obligations. It wasn't the point. Um, you know, I think that, uh, so what they expect to get out of it? I mean, I'm sure for what the money they spend is they expect to get a lot of awareness. They expect to get a lot of, uh, as you hear, from Palm themselves. They expect to get a lot of media impressions. They expect to get a lot of uh, attention. Um, they expect this to be a point of conversation. What, what makes these companies so smart, in my opinion? is that rather than, you know, walking away, they said, why don't we become a part of this? Why don't we become a part of the dialogue and invest? And it makes them look very smart. You know, it makes them look very secure in their identity. It makes them look really confident in what their company stands for. And, you know, they become now a real talking point in a conversation that I think is important in today's environment. And it's going to be one that they're going to be married to, not only now, but forever. So, I mean, that's a, for one and a half million dollars, that's a huge accomplishment. That's a huge thing to kind of, have as a you know as a feather in your cap, uh, versus like you know you buy a Super Bowl commercial for three million bucks and then it's gone, you know. So uh, you know from their standpoint, I think that's probably the biggest thing they want. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for coming to festival. My pleasure. I love taking the Acela, <laughs> even though the internet sucks on it, but it's but the Acela is great.